Coding is one of the best skills someone can learn. Because of this, many people like you guys want to learn programming to help boost your career or learn another skill. Java, Python, C Sharp, C++, and HTML are just some of the programming languages available out there to learn. But one of the key downsides to programming isn't coding or debugging, but simply learning the language itself. You see, there are millions of people, young and old, who want to learn programming, but some find it difficult to do so with hard classes and 10 hour long courses all over the internet. You might decide to conquer this by watching 15 minute long videos on the internet to learn some of the basics, but realistically speaking, this is not going to help in the long term. That's why in today's video, I'll be discussing top secret methods that not even the best teachers may tell you about learning how to code. And on top of that, I'll be showing you some resources that will change your coding game forever and bring you ahead of the game. So be sure to stick to the end so you don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to change your life forever. But before we do that, let's first discuss why traditional methods of learning today will not help you in tomorrow's future. Now I'm not saying that sitting in a classroom or roaming the internet can't help you to learn how to code. They can, and this is how I originally learned how to code. But instead of following rigid instructors given to me, I took it a step further and used a strategy that 99% of programmers don't use that'll help you get ahead of the competition. Before we get into that strategy later in the video, let's imagine you're sitting in a classroom learning everything you need to know about riding a bike, from balancing, steering, gear, suspension, etc. And you come out of that class knowing every inch of a bike, but there's one problem, you never actually learn how to ride a bike. Now I think you can see what the problem is here. This is the issue with learning how to code today. You can absorb all the information you want from courses and classes, but you'll most likely walk out of there knowing little to nothing about programming. And if going to class or watching 10 hour courses is the only thing you do to try and learn something about coding, you might as well not because 99% of new programmers do the exact same thing and you'll have a tough time standing out in the crowd. But don't worry, later in the video I'll give you key advice that'll give you a head start you need to get ahead of everyone else and make sure that you can land that job or get into that school. Be sure to watch till the end as I have some resources as well that'll help you utilize the strategy to its fullest and stand out from your peers. Now let's go back to that bike example. Instead of just walking out of class knowing everything about a bike, you've taken the extra time after class and actually learn how to ride a bike. And you tell me who's better. Someone who knows what a bike is and can ride it, or someone who can't. Now, it's the same thing with learning how to program today. You might know the function of a for loop or an if statement, but until you actually use it in your own programs, you've essentially learned nothing. And here's where my strategy comes in that 99% of programmers don't use, and it's what I like to call experimenting. This is where you first watch one of my videos or someone else's and then immediately practice what you learned in that video. Now I know what you're thinking, but here's where you take it a step further. Instead of just plainly practicing this, you play around with it and you create your own little games and mini programs with whatever you just learned. You can also add this to a passion project you might be working on and trust me, once you master this technique, you'll be better than most people when it comes to programming because instead of just practicing whatever you learned, you apply to what I call mini programs to help you understand these concepts better. You're essentially playing around with code to understand it better. And if you want to get even better at programming to catch up with our fast paced world today, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more programming content in the near future. Now here's an example. Imagine you just got done learning about for loops from watching one of my videos. Now when you go and practice this on your own, you create little mini games like a countdown machine or a number guessing game. This might sound like a lot of work and really unnecessary to some people, but really practicing and dialing in on this will let you lock in whatever you're trying to learn so you don't forget any new programming concepts in the future. And this is especially important during much more advanced programming concepts involving rendering and even AI. And before we dive into the best resources to use for experimenting, it's important to understand some common pitfalls that many beginners fall into when learning how to code. Avoiding these mistakes will help you save time and frustration and help you to become a more effective programmer. Let's go over a few of these now. One of the most common mistakes I used to make when experimenting is something we all used to do. 
Imagine yourself writing a hundred line script for a new concept you learned in programming, 2D arrays for example, and you'd run your code and realize there's an error. Now this scares me even thinking about it. So one of the best things you can do is write and test your code in small to medium size increments relative to your total script size, as this will make debugging much easier and simpler for you. Something else I'd also recommend doing and taking the time to learn is something that'll take your debugging game to the next level. When you look at an error message in your program, it can look like a bunch of gibberish and it can become overwhelming sometimes, especially if you have multiple errors. This is why I highly recommend learning what the debugging errors mean even down to the symbol so you can quit wasting time with error messages. And a ton of this information is available on YouTube and other sites for completely free. And let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to make a video explaining error messages. Here's another thing you can do to save even more time. Something else that happens too often is beginners write long code blocks and then struggle to debug because they first need to reread and understand their own code first before they can start fixing issues. This is why I would strongly recommend commenting as much as you can in your code. And the rule of thumb for me is to comment on any code that isn't immediately obvious to you so you can save your time and help anyone else who's working with you to understand your code. And this is just the tip of the iceberg with mistakes that new programmers make too often. And just for you guys, here's some more mistakes that beginners and intermediates make on a day-to-day -day basis. Not enough practice, skipping the basics, not seeking help, and learning too many languages at once. These are pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. And now, here are some of my favorite resources to use when you apply this technique. And be sure to comment below your favorite techniques besides the one included in this video. Using resources like books, videos, and coding challenges can help you practice your coding every time you learn something new. And you can use it on the go. One of my favorite websites to go and practice my skills on is CodingBat. CodingBat is a free resource that anyone can use on any device. It contains lots of different coding challenges from the basics like if statements to much more complicated subjects like 2D arrays. And it even contains solutions in case you ever get stuck. The best part is that it can be used for Java and Python. So be sure to check it out in the description below. By the way, this video isn't sponsored. I just really like using coding back to learn new Java skills. This next resource is something very special to me. And it's my ebook, The Self-Made Programmer, The Absolute Guide to Getting Started. This is a project I've been working on for quite some time now, and I truly believe that this will help you get started on your coding journey no matter what programming language you decide to learn or what level you are at. Link in the description below. Now we've gotten lots of advice in this video today, and in order to use experimenting today, you need a good code editor like IntelliJ to start your coding journey and master your skills. So be sure to check out the installation video for IntelliJ on screen now. Thank you for watching.